Good morning. Thank you for the warm invitation to be here. Um, as an introduction, I am uh, Deacon Andrew Larson. Uh, deacons, you might not know that we get a different kind of stole, or a fancy church scarf, as I like to call it. Ours go across the chest, so I can put all my merit badges on it if I want to. So. But really, it's great to be here with this morning, and I uh, appreciate the chance to, to speak with you and the, for those who are at the forum to talk about um, community building and storytelling. So I know I just met most of you for the first time, but I'm going to ask you to do a little bit of an exercise with me. I want to try and paint a word picture for you all this morning, to sort of paint a scene for you to help maybe transport you somewhere else, just temporarily. So if you'll indulge me for a little bit, sort of get yourself comfortable, whatever that looks like in your seat, and get ready to picture within your mind the setting that I'm about to describe with you. So settle into your pew, perhaps put your eyes at rest or even close them if that makes you comfortable. Whatever will bring you into this sort of imaginative, meditative state that will allow you to be delivered somewhere else. Everyone ready? I got a few head nods, so we'll see how it goes. So when I first start with the sounds, you hear the gentle rustle of the tide coming in over a pebbly beach. As the waves recede back into the ocean, you can hear the cascading of the old shells and rocks as they slide back towards the water. That ebb and flow of the ocean gentle tide, the rhythmic sound that it creates, which can often be so soothing. And around and behind you are the towering evergreens that dominate the forests of our home here in the Pacific Northwest. The beautiful green boughs with their trunks that reach way up into the sky. Today, that sky might be more sunshine with clouds, but often maybe it's gray and drizzly, whatever sky you want to picture. And as you take in and scan the ocean and the immensity of the sea, something catches your eye. What's out there? Is that a, that's a fluffy, playful sea otter dancing in the surf? happily munching on some clams and riding the waves ever so naturally. The sea otter looks delighted to be in their home, belly full and content with its life. The sea otter, the beautiful trees, the ocean. But wait, does that sea otter also have a basket full of toys? And it's slowly moving towards us. And I'm pretty sure that sea otter just spoke to us, offering up and saying, you can have these toys because sea otters like to share, and these are the ones that I'm not playing with right now. Wow, what a generous little sea otter. So you can open your eyes. By now you've realized that this scene has maybe gone quite bizarre, because it, it was actually the imaginary world that my four-year-old niece was creating with me just earlier last weekend. She was playing a friendly and lovely sea otter who was just really trying to practice out those early childhood lessons of sharing and being in relationship with others. She had just been at the Point Defiance Zoo earlier that week and she had seen the sea otters crack open their frozen clams. And those real life otters captured her attention and imagination, spurring her own adventure into what life might look like to be a fluffy, adorable otter. And in her world, there's always toys involved. But her imagination was on fire. She was taking the simple playroom that we were in and transformed it into a whole new setting with new characters full of actions. She was practicing. She was actively practicing her imagination and was finding such joy in the creative process. And this is often how we, how we talk about imagination. It's how we think about imagination so often. The wonder and curiosity, the exploration and creativity the discovery and new possibilities, they're all often couched and associated with childhood. We talk about finding and getting to know our inner child. It's almost like a treasure hunt of sorts that we're seeking out our childhood to somehow reclaim it. Folks will say that we need to relearn what it means to be a child, which all of that could be a valuable lesson in of itself. But I think today our scripture is saying something else. Our scripture today is inviting us in to consider that the possibility that imagination is actually a deeply and holy practice. 
It's a muscle to be flexed as part of our faith practices and not just relegated to the realm of childhood and play. Holy imagination as a spiritual practice that goes along with our other spiritual practices. It accompanies our prayer, our worship, our singing as part of a faithful life and relationship with God. Where imagination is the mature and learned practice that we seek to incorporate into our daily routines. Where imagination can sustain and brighten our communal hope. Hope that is wild and daring. An imagination that can also be on fire. Because God's hope for us is abundant, abundant and plentiful. And the hope we find in God cannot be contained. God transcends and breaks out of boundaries, bringing hope to a tired and wearied world. God's hope that can work in ways beyond our understanding, where we might have to push the limits of our imagination and dream bigger. You know, far too often we favor our own judgment. We favor our judgment of who is in and who is out. We often displace the Lord as sovereign of all. We do this in lots of ways. We do this through our politics, through our religion and as a church, all through our exclusivity, displacing God of all. But that's not what we get in the text in Isaiah today. Instead, we hear God extending their promise of hope, going beyond the line drawing, the pick aside mentality, and instead a boundary breaking hope that swells up, bringing along with it all of the outcasts of Israel. And in Isaiah, this is not some half-baked invitation to the foreigner and eunuch in this text. This isn't some all are welcome and then we stop there. No, this is full inclusion. There's a place at the table for them. There's a temple spot for them. There's a voice to be heard. There are joyful shouts at their presence. We are enriched as a community by them. They are bound up in the hopeful covenant of God. This is an everlasting covenant that is not built on exclusion. It's about inclusion, imaginative, wild, hopeful, radical inclusion. An inclusion so radical that it reinterprets and defines scripture. An expansive, overwhelming inclusion. God who sees the boundaries and the limited spaces that we create as humans and transcends them, breaks them, busts them wide open, overcome them and says, my imagination is big enough and wide enough to include them all. Our boundary breaking of God, our boundary breaking God of hope says, don't stumble over these small categories, these small and simple boxes that you create for me, that you create for your community. Instead, be wild in your dreaming. Be courageous with your inclusion. Dream big, and you're done dreaming big, dream even bigger. God is saying through these scriptures this morning that I can make what you say is impossible, possible. I am the God of hope, and nothing, absolutely nothing, can hold back my love for you. I am the God of the outcasts. Our dreams are what can move us forward into what comes next. Our dreams keep the door open when the topsy-turvy world would rather slam it shut. Bold and boundless God of hope keeps the possibility of new and right beginnings open to all of us. As I said, our scripture is an invitation to imagination as a spiritual practice. And we're not always good at it. We might need to train and flex our imagination muscles to consider those who we might not always be willing to include in the immensity of the Creator's love. We might even need to work out our imagination to be a place of self-reflection and introspection on how justice can thrive in new and meaningful ways. We might need to stretch our imagination to think of how we continue to be emboldened by the grace of God. Where our imagination, which sometimes might atrophy or weaken, is revitalized by the awe that we find in God and our ever-committed relationship to the divine. Our gospel ends with this line, we have never seen anything like this. Let us live into that promise again and again, where imagination as a spiritual practice is where we might need to think of messy 
vibrant ways of understanding and not the binaries that keep us broken into categories. Where our gospel story gives us a chance to be bold in our imagination. Where our, our imagination might need to include busting a hole in the roof, disturbing those on the inside, so that those who are left out can get in. We might need a strong imagination, an imagination that is resilient, where we're not shocked by that hole happening in our roof, but in fact, we encourage somebody to cut that hole in our roof. We encourage them to destroy our spaces so that we can better live into the kingdom of God. We are inviting in, we're actively encouraging, we're hoping and dreaming for gospel-inspired divine demolition. Because if imagination is a daily practice, a daily fiery and messy practice, it allows us to see the pain in the world and make it more bearable. Imagination is a booster for hope. Because it takes what is before us and says, this can be something different. I can imagine and trust in God that this can be something different. Imagination and hope go hand in hand. Imagination is a dance partner with hope, swinging and twirling hope around in wild and new dance moves that keeps hope on their toes and alive in their hearts. But without that imag imagination, we'll always be caught in the same slow step and binary thinking. I struggle with making sense of the incessant news cycles, the piles and piles of political mailings that show up at my door, the growing warmer days, all of the unthinkable and unimaginable things that keep happening and happening, those unthinkable and unimaginable things. But perhaps they're not so unimaginable, but they're just so completely overwhelming. And if we do not train our brain and our heart and our very soul to think in amazing, God-inspired, vibrant, imaginative ways forward, will always remain stuck and overwhelmed. Imagination needs to be our dance partner. And radical reimagining might be exactly what our church needs, perhaps what this community needs, what our world needs. Dancing in the wild and boundless mercy of God into imagination-fueled possibilities. That might be exactly what our church needs. Flexing our mind and heart muscles to live into the possibility and vibrance of what might be imaginative, holy, roof-busting communities. So I hope that you hear this invitation then to be playful, to be imaginative, to be full of dance. So to end, to hear this blessing again one more time from Meta Herrick Car Carlson, which is called For Walking Through Doors. Or perhaps this morning, we can call this blessing for flinging doors right off their hinges and busting open roofs. So hear this blessing one more time. Before you pass through, stop just long enough to hear your hopes on the other side. Before you pass through, stop long enough to hear your hopes for, for the other side. And you cannot know for sure just yet which paint this portico in adventure but it's the unknowable, it's the imagination that makes it wild. Amen.